Educating to Protect Intellectual Property, also known as EPIP, is a national education initiative to educate young people about the importance of intellectual property, the laws and policies protecting it, and the responsibilities of citizens in respecting it. A partnership between Street Law Incorporated and the Constitutional Rights Foundation in Los Angeles, EPIP is funded by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and the U.S. Department of Justice. What is intellectual property? Intellectual property is a type of asset. It's intangible. You can't touch it, you can't smell it, you can't see it, but it nonetheless is an asset. Uh, it, is, um, it derives from uh, human creativity, ingenuity, and effort. And it derives its value from the commercial advantage it gives to its owners. And that commercial advantage uh, is a value that we are seeing more and more today. Perhaps just as importantly, this is part of the constitutional fabric of the United States and frankly of global commerce. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it is something that it, we encounter every day. What are some types of intellectual property? In the United States, there are four primary uh, types of intellectual property. Patents, copyrights, trademarks, and trade secrets. Patents deal with inventions. Copyrights deal with expressions of idea, original works of authorship. Uh, trademarks deal with designations or symbols that reflect the source or origin of goods or services. And trade secrets are just that. They are confidential, non-public information that provides commercial advantage to parties who own them and uh, take the reasonable steps to keep it protected. Those are the four main types, but there are many others that you may encounter. In Europe, for example, there's database protections. Uh, additionally, they have industrial designs. In the United States, we have two types of patents, for example, utility and design. Uh, in trademarks, you have trademarks and service marks. Trademarks for goods, service marks for, uh, for services. Uh, and then there are others that are species of uh, contract rights. Confidentiality happens to be one, know-how, and things of that nature. And another one that comes up, and especially for kids, are domain names. Domain names themselves are not intellectual property per se, but they implicate trademark uh, laws. And so therefore, they many times are bundled as part of intellectual property. Why is it important to teach intellectual property to young people? Uh, this, is, this is a great question from my perspective. Number one, it's given me a career. But uh, perhaps uh, I should uh, start with the fact that all of us, and children in particular, are surrounded by uh, intellectual property, whether we recognize it or not. From the music we listen to, the videos and, and, uh, and uh, broadcasts that we watch, uh, the brand cereal that we eat, the brand that's on the back of a car, all the inventions that are, form the basis of patents that are in our automobiles, and in the, uh, the science of, uh, of uh, engineering and so forth. All of those things we encounter, and the children, of course, encounter that as well, perhaps more, because of their encounters with media. As far as uh, today goes, internet and digital copying has created an environment where copying is very easy, and there's no degradation. The first copy is just as or the, I should say the thousandth copy is just as good as the first copy. And so therefore, copying is easy, and if you don't know the rules, be, uh, conducting uh, yourself in an unlawful manner is very easy. Uh, the other thing is that we're seeing the, uh, the liabilities that come from that copying being visited on school systems and parents, so that there's a great deal of concern, heightened concern, Add to that to the fact that some forms of intellectual property violations can rise to the level of criminal conduct. So we've got some urgency there. But the picture's not all negative. First and foremost uh, in the positive camp is that more and more businesses find their value in intellectual property. That's where the assets are and the asset value of the company. That's their competitive advantage. So your job market is going to require that you understand that 
as you go about entering the commercial world and entering the business world. And then as I started out by saying, there are some wonderful careers attached to intellectual property. I'm a lawyer. Paralegals and uh, legal secretaries all deal with it. But it's beyond that. It's contract managers. It's IT specialists. Anyone who encounters intellectual property as part of their job description, whether it's an inventor, a scientist, uh, an academic, uh, professors, all those people are, have their jobs by virtue of understanding uh, the, uh, the law of intellectual property.